Hi guys, I'm Laurie Vitali, and on this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen, I want to share with you what I like to call my custard chocolate rolls. Now, this recipe was absolutely inspired by a tweet I got when I first made, and I shared with you my DIY like um, pudding mix, vanilla pudding mix. Someone tweeted me and said, hey, in my country, we make vanilla pudding and we use it instead of butter from when we make our cinnamon rolls, and we just use raisins and things like that, and that like sparked an idea in my head and I thought I have got to try that and of course I wanted to add some chocolate to it to really make it luxurious and rich and really something special so I have made this recipe very very uh, quite a few times ever since because it's so good I even posted a picture a while ago on Instagram I had like the whole slab and it was just gorgeous it's just a beautiful recipe it's so simple and easy we're gonna use vanilla mix uh, the vanilla pudding mix two ways and I'll show you uh, both ways and they're just phenomenal so the list of ingredients to make the dough is not very big you're gonna need all-purpose flour salt granulated sugar unsalted butter that's been melted whole milk, an egg, some instant vanilla pudding, whether you make your own mix or you buy it pre-made, you just need two boxes. You need some warm water at about 115 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you're gonna need some sugar and then some yeast. This is active dry yeast. Such a fabulous recipe, I can't wait to share it with you. I'm so excited. <laughs> when something is inspired by you, it feels, I, I, it's just to, in my head, I feel like this is how you guys feel about a recipe that I post that you really love. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like my way of seeing what you guys eat and I just love it, I get really excited. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we need to activate the yeast. So in my warm water, I'm going to add my sugar and my yeast and you just mix that together and you let that sit for just a few minutes until the yeast is activated and it's nice and foamy and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there but you just set that aside now to my flour and salt I'm going to add a half a cup of my vanilla pudding mix and like I said if you don't make your own by all means just go to the store and buy two boxes of this pudding mix for some reason, adding some of it in my dough makes the dough so pillowy soft and it adds just like a level of vanilla sweetness that's just phenomenal. So I'm adding some of that in there, giving that a stir. I'm also gonna add my sugar at this point. I already had the salt in there. And now I'm gonna take my dry mixture and I am going to add that right in there, like so. And then all I need to do is wait for my yeast to get nice and cloudy. I'll show you when it, when it, what it looks like when it gets there. And then we pretty much add everything else in. We mix until it's you know, perfectly combined. So I'm going to clean up. I'm going to wait for my yeast to be ready. And then I'll show you the next step. The yeast is ready. You can see it's nice and foamy. It's got little bubbles on the surface. That is what we are looking for. So I'm going to just take this. Add that right to my flour mixture, along with everything else, along with the milk, the melted butter, and my egg. And now all I need to do is just mix this for about four to six minutes on medium speed, like medium to medium low. You know, every standing mixer or mixer in general is different, so just keep an eye on it. You want this to be really nice, soft dough, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. Okay, you can see it's really silky, it's tacky, borderline sticky, but that's okay. That's what you want, because if you add too much flour, then it's gonna, the dough will just become too hard, and you, you, don't, want your, <laughs> you don't want your rolls and your buns to be hard. <laughs> Although maybe you do, but you just want to get all this off of your beater here, off of your dough hook attachment. I like to use like a little scraper like this. And then you just get it all out into an oiled bowl. I just used some veg oil, but you can use whatever your heart desires. It will be perfectly fine. Excellent. And then all I like to do at this point is just, I added it in and then just flip it around. That way now both sides are oiled and you don't get that weird like the, you know, film that forms on top of your dough. And you need to just wrap this with some plastic wrap, stick it somewhere warm, and let it rise for about an hour and a half to two hours or until it's doubled in size and volume. 
Now, something else you need to do right away, once you get this rising, you need to prepare some vanilla pudding. And I have showed you how I do it in my uh, homemade vanilla pudding mix. All you do is you take a half a cup of your vanilla pudding mix, you mix it with two cups of whole milk on your stove top, and you cook it just well until it becomes nice and thick for a few minutes, and then you let it cool, pop it in the fridge to cool completely. It's exactly the way you would do a cook and serve uh, vanilla pudding mix, if you will. So go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the same thing. It's really simple, so I don't need to show you that. But if you want to see exactly how I did it, go ahead and check, check out my vanilla pudding mix video, and I'll walk you through it step by step. So I'm going to get this rising, get my vanilla pudding mix cooling, and then it'll be time to rock and roll. We will be rolling. So that made sense. Most likely more in my head than I did out here, but that's okay. My dough has risen beautifully. It took about two hours. And that's another thing I wanted to mention too. If you ever really feel intimidated with your dough not rising, if you know your yeast is activated like mine was all, you know, bubbly and stuff, then you shouldn't have a problem. You just need to give it time and you need to make sure you put it in a draft, draft free place so that way it doesn't get disturbed. You can roll this out with your rolling pin if you want to. I'm just doing it by hand. You just want it about, you want like a 15 by 9 inch um, rectangle. Don't worry about it too much. Now what I have here is my pudding that I did. It's all ready to go. And this is some really good quality milk chocolate. And I just pulsed this in my fruit processor until it was all in smaller pieces. You can use chocolate chips if you want to. I have done it both ways. And in my opinion, a really good quality eating chocolate makes all the difference. And I like milk chocolate because it just, I don't know, it just tastes richer to me. It just, it's my favorite. So that is what I'm using. You can see the specks of vanilla from the vanilla pudding mix running through the dough. So that makes me really happy. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take our pudding and just put it on there. I know it looks like a lot, but... Do not panic. You just put this in a single layer and then you just top it with your chocolate. Okay. Got my prepared pan that I just squeezed with some nonstick spray. And then just kind of like you were to do any kind of uh, cinnamon roll, like kind of your typewriter finger, you just fold that like so and then you just roll it like a jelly bean and if anything escapes you'll be fine obviously i meant a jelly roll all right so then you just sort of tuck the seam underneath and now you need to cut this into 16 pieces so i just kind of cut it in half then in half then in half you get the drift all right, these are all cut and ready to go. You can see I put 13 in here and three in the, this smaller pan because I didn't want to cram them all in here because I'm going to let these rest now for another 45 minutes before I bake them. So now what you need to do is you need to cover these with some plastic wrap. Then after you have let them rest for about 45 minutes, bake them at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes or so, or until golden brown. And I'll show you what they look like when they are done. So all I'm going to do is just cover, let them rest, bake, and then I'll show you. My rolls baked for about 35 minutes. Now you'll notice that the little pan of three is missing and you'll notice my hair is up and that's because I've got family here and we, are, we were so impatient to wait for these to cool that the three just kind of got attacked immediately. So they smell fantastic. They look gorgeous. And I just kind of want to show you how soft this dough is. I mean, it's just really, really foolproof. It's unbelievably soft, and I mean, normally I'd go in for that guy right there, but really, it doesn't make much difference because it's just insanely soft and delightful. And, you know, when you are folding them and rolling them and whatnot, it, they can be quite messy, but don't let that scare you. Look at that pillowy dough. Look at that. Look at that. I mean... It is absolute perfection. What I was saying was, oh, don't let that intimidate you. Get messy. You're in your kitchen. The outcome is so worth it. It's so wonderful. I mean, 
I'm gonna try and cut this in half so you can see. But really wonderful, really delicious, really soft, kind of incredible, to be honest with you. And please, use the best eating chocolate because it makes a world of a difference. You know me, if it didn't make a difference, I would use chocolate chips, but this just works out so much better. Hope you've enjoyed spraying time with me. Go to LaraInTheKitchen.com to get the written recipe. I really do hope that you enjoyed this recipe and I hope to hear a lot more from you and give me your tips and ideas for future videos. You can tweet me, Instagram, you can leave it in the comments here, Facebook, what have you. I love hearing from you because I always like the outcome. It's just always awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.